Always swinging, always slinging uh, beer out of the top of the can here. You got to get it up on the mic. Or in the mouth. Couldn't hear. <sighs> Bad form. I'll, if sometimes I get it up on the mic and I, it inhibits my actual cracking ability. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out where I'm, where I need to be. All right. Technique. What do you yeah. got, Matt? That, my, crack, got? my crack oh. previous to this, well, before Matt was here, great crack. I was practicing in the shower the other day. <laughs> That's unfair. You can't practice in the shower. That's yeah. You've got great acoustics. <laughs> Give it to me. Oh, the quick draw. That was a deep one. All in one. Mm. Ooh, he must have talked to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> the deep one or the quick draw? <laughs> it ain't the second one. <laughs> So it's the deep one. <clears throat> oh, sorry. No, it's definitely the first one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so it is. It's the first. Do you, what, oh. do you wear that hat? <laughs> Dude, I had to wear the hat. Is that your Florida hat? That is a Florida hat, right? Yeah, there. I got a hat in Florida. You have to. I mean, it's for the beach. Yeah. You need, a, you need that built in shade. I have a Ron John, one of these two. What would you call that hat? A Geechee hat? No, this is my Riley Bymaster hat. Riley Bymaster hat. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you a picture. It's a good one. All right. Hmm. Yeah, I wish we were on video already. Do you, do you think DK Metcalf <laughs> would wear that hat? Oh, he'd wear the hell out of this hat. I don't know. He's got a lot of hair, so it'd probably that'd be pretty cool. This is an XL. This is an XL. I'm pretty sure anything DK put on would probably look cool. He would look better than I am. I can guarantee that. All right. I well, just, I just wish he had a little more body fat. Yeah. Well, I can give him a couple percent of this. <laughs> Foreman's offered some up. Not a healthy percentage there, and it, it can't be sustainable. From what was report early early reported there. Listen to several doctors tell me how that's not safe. Right. And you're gonna lose this is just a lot of it's a slew of things. Google it. It uh You can Google it, it's worth a Google. So DK Metcalf weighing in at the combine, six three, two twenty eight, thirty four and seven eighth arms, six and seven eighth hands. And then we get to the forty six and seven eighth hands. I'm sorry, nine Jeez, and seven eighth. What is a scary hands. movie too? <laughs> Grab on my good hand. <laughs> Stir these mashed potatoes. <laughs> Nine and seven eighths hands. Normal hands. Big hands. So would you, did you say six three and three eighths? I said we round down, right? We're gonna if it's three eighths, we'll round. If it's six, five eighths, we'll round up. Okay, so, so six three. Well, six three and a half. No, not quite. That'd be four eighths. If you divide by the common denominator, or one half. All right. So he ran a four three three forty. <laughs> Twenty seven bench press reps. Um. A 40.5 inch vertical, 134 broad, and then it really falls off from there. <laughs> You're not going to tell them what the, 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 the three cone drill there? Well, so obviously all those numbers are great numbers and had everyone. Really there's, a lot of, there's a lot of 90s I'm seeing right there and an 80, but there's a lot of 90s I'm seeing right there. And there's a two. And a three. You're talking about the percentiles. Oh, it is. Yeah. So... Most of those metrics that I read off were in the high 90s, one or two in the in the mid to low 80s. Hand size and height were in the 80s. All the rest in the uh, 90s to upper 90s. Yeah. And then you get down to the three cone, which notoriously bad, the 7.38 and the 20 shuttle, uh, 4.5, which is in the three and the two percentile of those things. So since 2003, there's been over 200 quarterbacks and 39 300-pound dudes that have recorded a better three-cone drill than DeKalen Zacharias of House Metcalf. <laughs> I just right. wanted to say that. that. That's the fully? Yeah. That's DeKalen the government? DeKalen Zacharias of House that's, Metcalf. That's the government. I'm sure he doesn't like that. We're just up on that Game of Thrones because it's all about to happen. It's really here. Oh, it's here. I'm all right. So... <laughs> Want to talk about <laughs> we got we, we got into a five minute uh, off yeah. off track uh, right before we started here. Don't Jason, need to follow that up. J and if we do, Jason's going to be exposed for a what'd you call him? <laughs> He's a casual. He's casual. a casual. Filthy casual. Such a casual. a casual. Is there like a game? Is it a throner? What are you? Is it a a got -er? Is there a <laughs> no? You're just not a casual. J okay. He's, wow. a, he's just a casual fan. I mean, the guy's only on the second watch through. I guess I won't be getting invited to the Game of Thrones trivia. I was actually, gonna, I was actually, the viewing party. I was actually going to invite you to that. Fam's Brewing on Wednesday. But I didn't even know about the the lady being old. I would be useless because I've never seen a full episode. I'm waiting until it's all over and then I'm going in. Yeah, but there's beer there, so that's true. I could go and I know those guys. Tom Good Brady guys. had a better three cone drill than DK. Right. So, but he did improve it at the pro day. To what? 
I don't know. I just said that he improved it. Well, it must have not been sub seven. It wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah, no. 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 Um, Which I don't know. I don't think I really care. I don't know why you run the three cone. Why well, run the it? other guys we're going to talk about tonight? Butler, Harry didn't run the three cone. Calvin Johnson, no three cone. Like Calvin. typically guys that big of ooh, another good one. Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Two out of three. Look out for mid-season meatloaf, mid-off-season meatloaf coming, coming soon. in May-ish. So, not sure why he did it. Shouldn't have done it. It didn't look good. It didn't fare well for him, and it would really it left a lot to be desired, and nobody would even give a shit right now what that three-cone drill it was. Right. Um, but that being it? said, if you watch him run the drills, he did run some different routes, and he looked pretty decent doing that. So that's a nice little positive in that uh, column there. He ran a, a, some in some some bigger in breaking routes and, and such and uh, didn't look terrible doing it because, you know, the first thing that everyone wants to bring up is the, the limited route tree. For sure. For sure. So is that something that uh, bothers you guys there or you guys like it bothers me in the sense that I didn't see it, but I think there is ability to do more. I think what he was asked to do at Ole Miss was just run deep and run comebacks that's what he was asked to do and he did those things pretty well while he was on the field so right he was asked he did his job do your job jay wayne um i don't i don't think it bothers me because what he does well he does it so well and if you can score deep touchdowns i mean he's got the comeback working in his favor and there was times when you saw him run a slant and he was open the quarterback wasn't really ever looking at him a ton. Right. Quarterback wasn't great in his own right. So that I think the quarterback and the play calling should all be taken into account in that situation there. I don't think the play calling was super great. And two, you you have a guy who missed it chunks of time. Uh, so, you know, never got a whole bunch of reps. I'm sure the quarterback is not super comfortable with DK Metcalf because he's not there at least la at large chunks. So they haven't, you know, been building a rapport with each other. And the quarterback is up and down and just clearly wasn't when you watch the Metcalf tape you you can see that he's not looking at Metcalf on a lot of times where Metcalf is open yep for sure um so I think you know and then he did what he did what he was asked to do do your job like you said so I, I don't think obviously you can take it away as a negative how about the fact that he only plays on one side of the field is yeah, that is that like that too. is only that he only plays the left. Is you it? see him. I saw him a couple times on the right, but not a ton. But is that something that is like, oh, he only does this. So there's, you know, are you guys, is that something that you're worried about? I, I think I used to be worried about it, but then I saw Juju Smith-Schuster and I was like, okay, well, that doesn't yeah. matter anymore. I mean, I don't know. There's probably some percentile of percentages and not, <laughs> but who cares? I don't, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. That, I, I think that's more of an indictment on the team than him. Yeah. I think that's more on the, I think that's more on Matt Luke and the offensive play calling. Than right. I don't DK. think if you move him to the other side of the field, he's going to be like, what do I do over here? Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, right. Um, what do you got? Well, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> For me, just put both hands up. What are you doing over there? Uh, so any, any, uh, any of your other negatives with, with DK here while we're, I mean, it, Injury history? Oh, for sure. The injury history. I mean, the guy only had 67 career Scare catches. Scare you more than anything else? Or is it just kind of, you think it was bad luck? Is it a prone thing? What do you think? So he broke his foot the second game of his freshman year. Don't know what type of break that was. They're pretty tight-lipped in college with these injuries are. So I don't know if he has a screw or if it was just some sort of, you know, I'm going to make a word, metatarsal. I don't know if that would require. I, I'm not a, I don't know. I shouldn't even said that. Uh <laughs> So that's I don't know if a, it a required a screw or not. Um, but then he had a neck injury seven games into 18. this past season, which required surgery. So anytime you, you hear that, I can see why people are, like, scared of him. But, I mean, I think he's I, – I think NFL teams are probably going to take this gamble on him and take him pretty high. And if they're willing to take that risk, then I'm not going to let this injury history – Way too, too much on me, I guess. It doesn't seem like a prone injury thing. It seems like some bad luck right. and terrible things that happened to him. Right. Yeah, Mike. I don't. Yeah, I don't think he's he's not in the same vein as Rodney Anderson is when it comes to injury history. But yeah, but I think that I don't even well, think that's, that's a. I don't even think that's a prone thing. I think that was also a couple of bad looks. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't like a, a, a like it wasn't like a shoulder over and over again or an ankle over and over. No, for again sure, they're they're completely different things. There's a bunch of different random. Like, yeah, is Keenan Allen injury prone now that he's had two healthy seasons in a row? Is he is Matthew Stafford injury prone anymore? No, 
So right. if you have a couple of healthy, healthy seasons, you're not injury prone anymore. I mean, you're more at risk. We'll call it. So are you you don't does that affect your minimally. view of Keenan Allen? No, I'm I'm talking for DK only minimally. It's a minimal yeah. effect. Minimal it's it's recent, so it's very recent. Any other concerns with with Metcalf? A little droppy. The drop inconsistent hands. I'd say with the three guys that we're going to talk about, them all of them have somewhat inconsistent hands. With there's your, there's bad drops in all this tape, but I would say that there's probably more drops in DK's tape, and there's w- less of his tape to watch. I would I wouldn't call it he has bad hands. I would call them inconsistent hands because there's some other plays where he makes some fantastic catches. Sure, and the spectacular catch rating on Madden is going to be pretty strong. I think for sure. <laughs> um, anything else? I don't always see great effort in the blocking arena. I think he could be a mad blocker, but he uh, it, they're also getting blown out in a couple of these games, so it's it's tough to really care too much when you're losing by a bunch. But yeah, I mean, I mean if you put up 27 bench reps, obviously you got some some strength there. Yeah, you and just, if you see I this guy see with his shirt off, I mean, yowzers. There's some scrunks. <laughs> Looks photoshopped. <laughs> yeah. So positives then. Any 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 other things that that you guys are super excited about. I know we kind of brushed over a couple, but Oh, he's fast. He real fast. He real fast. He's scary fast. For Especially sure. for that size. Six six three, we're calling him a right. Six three rounded down from three eighths. So any any other big positives that you guys are really I mean, I think he makes pretty decent adjustments to the ball in air. I th- I think he's a good ball tracker. I think uh, you know, I think of that Alabama play when he beast of the dude off the line of scrimmage and then the ball was overthrown and he was able to accelerate with some bursts and get right underneath it and make the catch it was and have some long arms and yeah it was the first play of the game go out there and grab it yep which, yeah when, which, big, which big, game was that that was the alabama game oh, it was the yeah. first play of the game yeah he, he makes that outside outside step move and the and the corner tries to kind of jam him that way and he wipes that <laughs> off and goes right and that's another thing is like he's probably the scariest of the wide receivers I've looked at as far as beating press coverage. Like, I mean, he's a solid hand fighter and he's really strong and long arms and he's just, his release moves off the line of scrimmage are pretty nice. It's fast. It's quick. It's really hard to jam him. And I mean, you make one little mistake or you get too far on him and you let him swim past you. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a houser. So I I think, yeah, I think that's a good call. I think he's, he's a pretty, he's a pretty good hand fighter. And I, I do like his releases off the line. Not a lot of jamming of him, uh, in the college game, um, I think that'll change a little bit in the pros because I think you're a lot more scared in the in the uh, in the NCAA of of coming up and jamming him and the guy not being maybe strong enough to handle him and then not being quick enough to maybe get back on you know every single play and knowing how fast the guy is. Yeah, um, which could change a little bit in the NFL, but I mean he's still you know elite fast. So yeah, um, and he's so big that it leads to to pretty solid run after the catch. Yep. He's so big and fast, right. and like which is something I think they missed out on a little bit there in, right. in Old Miss. Like get, never throw him screens. Short, and stuff. short. Well, they did throw him some screens, and when they did, it was great. But shorten up some routes, give him some slants, let him hit some posts. Like right, it just it, the cross. He, if he can get go across the field with this guy, like that's all you need to do. And I, I think that's going to be the biggest thing at the next level is who drafts him, the situation they put him in, and how they build this kid up, and and how they're going to execute him in their offense like I don't I don't think he needs the offense quote unquote catered to him but it's it's going to be how they use him and I think he could be super effective it just you can't just go out there and be like hey run on the field and, and do a comeback like there's other things that this guy can do he's not incapable of doing these he was open on different routes they just didn't throw it to him he was locked in when you watch him you see AJ Brown out there catching balls moving chains be he and he played a lot so he was out there with what's the quarterback's name I can never pronounce Jordan it. Tamu who's not fun to watch. No, I and watched him last night for two hours. It wasn't fun. He is certain like AJ Brown's like seemed to be just in watching the Metcalf tape. Haven't watched Brown, but like seems to be the safety valve seems to be the guy who's moving the sticks and Metcalf is, is not getting looked at all the time. And again, could be because Metcalf's not on the field and on the practice field and not familiar. And like Jordan, whatever his name is, number 10 is, uh, is just really not looking his way on sometimes where there was plenty of opportunities where I saw if you would have just look DK's way he probably could have scored some touchdowns on these shorter routes that he was running if you would have just got the ball to him but you went to AJ Brown who was open and got you the first down and that was it yeah so I mean I think there was a ton of missed opportunities there and I think I I think DK's fine doing other things and then uh shout out to I I can never pronounce his last name Brett call 
Kalos, Kalamos, Kal- I'm not Kalamer. I can't. I, I I'll for, look it up. I always forget what his last name is, but he he has a nice video about DK in there, and uh, he compares him to Calvin Johnson, Kalman, something like that. Um, Kalman. Yeah, and he breaks down. He, with he, he Calvin shows you Johnson, Calvin Johnson's route tree, and you know he made his living off it, of four routes. How it was basically goes posts and uh, slants. and slants essentially. Yeah, but that means he's got a two hundred percent better route tree than DK does. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's just not what he was asked to do. And then, you know, there is examples of him doing those other things and just not getting the ball thrown his way. I also think that comparing Ole Miss's offense to Georgia Tech's offense might be a bit. Right. No, and, and he's talking about Calvin Johnson in the pros. Oh, uh, four routes, Calvin Johnson, four routes that Calvin Johnson it, ran it, in the pros. It was it was 75 percent of his route tree. Right. Was, yeah. Were those routes. He also um, usually ran other routes, but all those were in a much smaller percentage than. Right. So, I mean, you can do that. And for like we talked about at the three cone drill for these bigger receivers to throttle down and make these really decisive cuts. It's pretty difficult for them. Calvin Johnson wasn't out there throttling down and making all these crazy decisive cuts. He just was being able to keep his momentum rolling on those slants and on those posts. And he's really fast and big. So you could throw the ball his way and, and just you got to get it in his hands. Yeah. And now he's a menace. Like, and I, I, you know, obviously Calvin Johnson and DK is not, I'm not saying DK Metcalf is Calvin Johnson by any means. And to your point, like Calvin Johnson at college was the only show in town at Georgia tech. And you have three potential, uh, NFL caliber receivers at Ole Miss right now. So, you know, compare apples to apples here. Yeah. All I right. Think, well, I think another thing we, d- we need to talk about is, is DK's high point ability. I mean, you saw that drink. drink. <laughs> Say the word high point. You got a drink, and uh, there's there's some other ones, but but in the Kentucky finish with power it, drink. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed, sir. <laughs> um, yeah, the Kentucky game. I mean, the guy just goes up there and gets it, and that's a game winning touchdown right there. That was, and they that means they trusted him. They just basically did. Um, I think that might have even been a uh, good old Shea Patterson back in his old Miss days. I don't know if it was Patterson or to Amu, but they just threw the ball up to him, trusted him to get the ball up there, and, and he got the ball up there. Patterson would have had to have been in 16, I think. No, 17. Was it? Yep, sure was. Okay, then you were probably right. But, yeah, I mean, he did, he did a nice job again, and that, and that might have been against a... So that was a game on the line? That was game on the line. Last, I, think, I, think, I don't know if it was the last part of the game. There was under, there was under 30 seconds That's a ago. big corner on him. I think, I, think. Was Lon, I think it was Lonnie, Lonnie Johnson. Yeah, I think yeah, it I was think so Lonnie too. Johnson. Again, he's an NFL. He's definitely going to get drafted. He's probably right. a day two, early day three guy. But, I mean, he's an NFL caliber, NFL caliber corner. He's probably 6'2", and DK just skies over there and gets the ball from him. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. All right, so... Uh, well, let's save the. We'll, well, after we're done with all three, we'll come back and we'll put them all in some sort of a ranking and talk about you know how they fit and what we think about them in that capacity. You want to add any uh, AJ Brown on the end of this thing? Yeah, I think a- I think AJ does. I think that AJ is the antith- in the antithesis of DK in that you're buying DK for his ceiling, but you're buying AJ Brown for his floor. Um, I think at worst this guy's a high end wide receiver three. I've been seeing a lot of juju comps. I think you guys have seen those as well too. I think my comp for him was a more athletic Cooper Cup, and if you can get that, I mean that's money in the bank. Yeah. So I think I have I have AJ Brown pretty high up there. So he's definitely a guy who's going to be in a top top five rookie pick for most people. Yeah. I, well, I, we haven't. Me and Jason haven't looked at uh, AJ Brown, but I knew you had and and. They they are in the same school and semi synonymous. Uh, so yeah, Demarcus Lodge. Don't even worry about him. You don't have to watch him. He's, <laughs> he, he, he's he is butt cheeks. Now the guy the guy is excellent around the sidelines though. He is phenomenal around the sidelines. But after that, not much else there from the good old DL. All right. Well, we'll get a little bit more DK on this uh, on the rankings between these three. But on the tail end, you want to take a break and we'll come back with. Uh, you want to do Harry or Butler next? I don't know. Let's talk about it at break. We'll be back. Oh, it's a teaser. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. That's a solid. Yeah. Better upgrade from my first go around. Welcome back. You can holler at us on the Twitter at the FF Dynasty. You can catch our 
guest today and second appearance, uh, Matt Foreman at Fat Mormon on Twitter. You can find Jay at Jay Wayne's World, and you can find myself at IMC Myers. So, who's it gonna be? <laughs> We're going Nikhil Harry. All right, we settled on Harry. Wait, wait, no, Nikhil. Of course, had to work a little. Uh, Wait, what was that, Nikhil? <laughs> I don't think they got it. Maybe one more, <laughs> Nikhil. <laughs> Your hands are freezing. I don't know how many times we're gonna get to use that. Maybe when uh, we talk about players who have drops, you know, we could be like, "Well, Your hands are freezing." <laughs> well, we'll go. We'll go. We'll at least get another run out of the hairy thing with the mock it up, fuck it up For after sure. the draft. So Hopefully, be fun. if if he turns out to be really awesome, we can use it more often. So, what are the odds that happens? Well, let's figure that out right now. Yeah. All right. Let's go right on on the combine. Height came in at six two and three eight. So we'll go six two. We're rounding down. Rounding down with a three eight. Not above the half. Right. If it's at half, do we go half? <sighs> you know what? I think that's a good idea. I think you should go half. And then anything above the half, we round up. Technically, <laughs> the math rule is that you round up with a point five, But I like the half. All right. We'll give you the half. We'll give you the half. Goes up from there. Weight, 228, 95th percentile. Strong. Strong to quite strong. Also very strong. 27 bench reps, 99th percentile. Uh, yeah. Wingspan, 78 and a quarter. So 78, 68th percentile. <laughs> That's a ding. Yeah, 68th percentile is a ding? Yeah, C, that's not even a C. C's get degrees. <laughs> D's, like, what had to happen with D's was, is I think Bush had to put, like, no student left behind, and we curved that thing up, and yeah. we got all those people. Yeah, in. I mean, if you curve, that's probably a B minus. <laughs> <laughs> Arm length, 78th percentile. There's your C plus. 33, C plus. C's get degrees. Where do you, where's your optimum breakout arm length? Uh, I mean, I mean, 95th percentile. That's what you're looking for. I want I want pterodactyl wings. Go, go gadget. Mm. We're not talking about Butler yet. Well, I don't even know where his wings are, but it's it's, it's he's like Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> I think they call him the condor. Um, so wingspan and arm length, both in the 98. <laughs> his arms, his arm span breakout is. <laughs> yeah. Off the charts. It's breakout arm span. Uh, and, and dominator. His, <laughs> and his arm span dominator. Uh, right, right, right. The wingspan dominator. So the 40 yard dash, 5'3, 45th percentile. Mm. Mm. Hand size, 9.5, 61 percentile. Nah. Mm. But he does, they, they, they do show up strong in, in certain times. Those, the those, hands. Those medium sized uh, <laughs> meat hooks of his. Sometimes yeah. there's there's drops, there's drops, but there are also some very, very solid catches. He's a ball squeezer. <laughs> um, vertical jump, 38, 38, 84th percentile. Broad jump, 122, 62 percentile. That's a little bit of a dig. Bench press, 27s, <laughs> as Jay Wayne mentioned, 99th percentile. Right there with DK Metcalf. Right there with DK Metcalf, that broad jump. I mean, I don't know what Calvin Ridley's broad jump was, but. Yeah, we proved that that doesn't matter. Right. Because, you said, know, well, I, I, don't, I don't know when the last time I lined up against somebody and had broad, broad jumped jump. out of my break. <laughs> that was what Calvin Ridley had to say about that. Are you saying Calvin Ridley didn't disprove the broad jump over there, uh, Fat Mormon? I'm just saying he had some big games and some, he had a few big games and. So Might have padded some stats so there. So the 10 touchdowns for a rookie, that doesn't really do yeah, much I mean, for you. I mean, he had some big games. They're just putting it to that. All right. And that's a, that's somehow not a good thing. I mean, but he had some bad, some some non-existent games. So yeah. I mean, he's a, a rookie. Rookie. Rook, rookie wide receivers typically take a little while. Julio Jones nice over bonus. on the other side. It was a nice bonus for him. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I'm not cer I'm not certainly not buying in where he is right now. It's, I'm, it's not, it's, I'm not purchasing him right now. He's very expensive, price. but I'm not mad at him. No. I, I ain't mad at him. Yeah. All right, so let's get down and dirty with Harry here. <laughs> Little bio from the island of St. Vincent. Mm, fun facts. Moved to Arizona with his grandmother when he was Chandler, very young. Arizona. Hmm. So that's stayed at home for college. Yep. Got in there. Grandma said, uh, need you to stay in the state. <laughs> she, he had a life alert just to make sure grandma was all right. 
every senior citizen should wear life alert. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. It's who knows how old is grandma is. She could be in great shape. She could be in the 90 something percentile and grandma's who knows. Well, should we jump? Let's jump into the percentile in here. So he, he crushed receptions and had tons of production receptions. Uh, how many beers have you had? Uh, just just like one. This is this is two. I had one before one, one pre-meeting. All right, so the hubbub about him is the breakout age is good and the dominator is good. The breakout age and the college dominator has all the metrics people very, very excited. Tighten the pants. Six to midnight. <laughs> very nice. A lot of dick jokes just happen rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> so does the fact that he can't separate matter? Because For all the girls out there, <laughs> moist in the downstairs. <laughs> Sploosh. <laughs> we don't want to discriminate. Because there's girl fantasy football lovers as well. Absolutely. All right. So (laughs) how about this breakout age in the Dominator? What do we... It's not not my wheelhouse, so I'll let somebody else uh, take it away. Matt, I mean, mean, How much does it matter, Matt? I mean, it matters. I think it definitely matters, but I think one of the things is he was kind of like the only show in town there for a while. Right. I mean... They do have um, uh, uh, Eno Benjamin there. Yep, the running Pretty back. Pretty solid running looks, back. Looks Pretty fun. S- yeah. Definitely. For and Balage sure. was for there. For sure. Balage yep. and, and Balage. Richards combo. But Balage was a little bit of... Had some good, nice receptions in his in his mm. day. But The converted doesn't, defensive doesn't, end. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't take anything away from Harry's kind of reception totals and, and what he did on the field. Because I think you are right. I don't know who else was really there taking too much away from the him. The last Arizona State receiver I can remember was Jalen Strong. Right. Other than that, oh, I do. Uh, who's is it? Kyle Williams? Is he the other guy that that's there that makes plays when you're watching Harry? Is that what his name is? Williams sounds remember. right, but that he looks f- he looks good out there. So I'm not going to take that away from him. But probably not. No, he's probably no Nikhil Harry. But right. So is that is that cause for moving him near the top of your board? Is that like something that like kind of all you need to see? You just need to see that breakout age and that dominator rating be where it is, and then that's you know that's good enough. For you to put them put them up near the top, why why is that so important for you? I think there's been too many stats that say that those things are important. I think when it comes to wide receivers, I think the metrics are more important when it comes to running backs because of more important for receivers than when it, than it is for running backs. Yes, and I think the metrics guys would and you, by metrics you mean these the breakout age the and breakout the age called versus like your combine metrics. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think the call I think the combine metrics are important as well too. I just think that college production has shown to be more consistently consistently meaning that they're going to see success in the NFL as well too. But There's there are guys that have succeeded that did Correct. I'm not saying I'm not saying if you don't have a if you don't have a high college dominator or high breakout age you're not going to succeed in the NFL. I'm not saying that by any by any means I'm just saying it seems to be a big indicator of future success when it comes to wide receivers. So I like seeing that. I don't think it's that okay, he's got a he's got an eightieth percentile college dominating, put him to the top of your board. I'm just saying that's definitely a big check in in that box. I think that's fair. I think it's fair to use those things and say that, you know, there is some some data to back it up, but there's plenty of other receivers that hit not using um breakout age and the the proper eighteen to nineteen breakout age and the college dominator necessarily, you know, and Depending on who it is, it, the, the stats could be skewed for the college dominator. And, and same thing of like you maybe you really didn't have anybody there and you were a pretty good player and you got pumped more balls your way at 18 or 19 to help the breakout age kind of increase. So there are ways around it a little bit. And I, I think plenty of players in the league have succeeded without having uh, those certain metrics. But yes, I agree that when it has it, it's something that you need to look at, especially when it's a higher end prospect. It could be a, a nice tipping point or, a you know, help to weigh the scales a little bit and in, in, um, yeah, maybe and, and a player being somebody who would potentially be a little safer, which I think is what I think majority of people think Harry is about as safe as they come right now out of a lot of these receivers. I wouldn't say he's the most safe, but of the three we're talking about tonight, yes, I think he is the most safe of those okay. three. But I mean, we're not talking about we're not talking about like seventy fifth percentile. We're talking about ninety fifth percentile of a breakout age and eighty eighth percentile of a college. Yeah, dominator. so those young. Are, those are strong numbers. Yeah, strong. Pretty strong. All right. Well, let's get into the. You got anything else, Jay Wayne? What do you got? Uh, some nice, nice comps on. Uh, well, if, uh, do you have any more on breakout age and dominator? Well, so I. I looking into it trying to figure out i've kind of written it off but i feel like it does does have a place and i wanted to know why wh- when it matters and why it matters more than 
another aspect of your game. Like I know people might not like Butler because he's got a late breakout age, but his combine metrics are off the charts. So I'm like, how do you know when you're supposed to pick and choose what what matters? And and I think I oh, guess we'll get into that. Oh, we'll get into that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll get into that. Let's do it. Well, we'll, we'll get him later. We'll wait, later. We'll wait later. Till we'll wait till happens. Butler. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, it looks like looking at this chart that I found on DLF, and I think it was by uh, our boy Pa Howdy, Peter Peter Howdy. Um, he's he's got it breaking down, Peter breaking Howard. down for you. How- great great bloke. How Howard? Yeah. yeah but it's, it's Howdy. Well, that's his Twitter handle. Well, I like the Pa Howdy. Yeah. Well, that's, you can call him that. That's his Twitter handle. Right. He's Peter Howard. Is his actual name. Howard? My bad, Peter. <laughs> It's so coming by like this coming from Jay Wayne over here, <laughs> Dwayne Wayne, <laughs> or Slay Wayne, uh, or just Jason. So oh, you went government all. He's got <laughs> he basically sixty percent of all first round wide receivers hit, and by hit they can finish. They they finished with a top twenty four PPR score. So they're like basically a wide receiver two. You you put down a wide receiver two season, you're considered that you hit. Um, just and one. I mean, yes, at least at least one season with a top twenty four PPR finish. Uh, and that so doesn't seem like a great hit to me, but <laughs> it seems low too. I mean, anyway, continue. it's setting the bar low, so I, yeah. I guess I kind of like that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Don't I set the Brashad Perry low but. standards equals high results? <laughs> 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 not not besmirching the work of Juan Pa Howdy. Limited yeah. options equals bad situation. Yeah. I think that's what you. Continue on. So basically, but so sixty percent of first round receivers hit, and I think that's that overall that's the stat. But then the, those that had a breakout age of eighteen or nineteen, they have like a seventy percent chance of hitting. Whereas uh, twenty and above, you know, it's only like fifty percent for twenty. And then there, I guess there's not twenty one percent. There was a no, I, I don't know. There's, it depends on the sample size. So, like, there was three players since 2001 drafted in the first round who had a breakout age of 22, and all of them hit. But that's but not a big enough sample size. because that's only three, it's not a big enough sample size. Otherwise, that would debunk this whole argument because you would say 100% of 22-year-old breakout ages hit. So, you, I guess it's not big enough. I don't know if nine is big enough to count 21 or not. Anyway, the point is there's several players that don't have this breakout age that that have hit i think so here's the, i think here's the other thing too when you're are you talking about just first round draft picks i, I was i was right there i don't think it, i don't specific, think uh what he was just talking about i don't I think he was. harry's not a first round draft pick i mean i haven't seen anywhere him going there rarely is he going in the first round when you get into the second round the numbers are more even basically across the board it's like if you 18 drops down to 25 percent, and I, t- I feel like that is so conducive on what's available in the draft class as well and the needs for right. all those other people so that you know i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't by any means call this a strong wide receiver draft class but it, it, it's, yeah I, it's pretty decent at the top i will say that it's decent at the top but to yeah. me these numbers like i guess if you're torn on a guy and you don't know between a couple guys you right. could let this be the deciding factor but I, or it could help you weigh in on based uh, on me trying to figure out what all this means i don't think there's any chance i'm going to let this be one of my origin like one of my leading off argument points of well the breakout age right. i mean that's it yeah. done deal it's not done deal it's 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 but a, that's it's, how people act sometimes like sure it's a good positive yeah Sure, I, I agree. That, that's a. That, I think that's the best way to put it. It's an. It's a very. It's a high check mark. Good positive. It's, a, a it's nice the, starting. It's, it's near at the top of the list. Maybe not for me, but it's a good. But it's a good. I agree with you though. But it is a good. It's a good pot. Good step in the right direction to to maybe potentially lowering the percentage of maybe missing on a player that you're going to draft. When you're splitting hairs, I definitely think that's a metric sure, you need to I, take, in, sure. take into consideration. I can Agreed. I can agree with that. All right, so let's get into what we actually think about the on-field play of this guy, which of all these players, really, which I think sometimes gets lost in all these other things. And when we talk about Butler, I think there are some t- uh, some reasons why the breakout age might be a little later than it is. So uh, we'll see what happens. Kyle right. Williams also was the other receiver at Arizona State who was making some pretty good plays, but all those really good plays all said and done when he was a, a – in 2017, the stats for Kyle Williams is 13 games played, 66 receptions, 763 yards, and seven touchdowns. And then this year, 44 receptions, 
uh, played all 13 games, 449 yards and two touchdowns. So to your point, uh, it looks good when he's out there and he makes some plays, but not uh, not any, getting the ball. Any sort he's of stud n- no, no. Uh, lining up alongside of uh, Harry here. So with that being said, what is your first uh, initial impression of Harry with the on the field play? Who wants hmm. it? I will guess first. Matt, what do you got? Yeah. I so I thought that he was able to win big and small because I thought he was able to win big by using that size, which we talked about. We were just talking about with his ability to set, not separate with maybe his route running or his his breaks, but he's able to use his great body control. He's able to use that to his advantage, where he's going to put himself in great situations where. He's gonna he's gonna use his the sidelines or he's gonna use his body to be able to get open in those small windows and that I think that translates well to the NFL and with his agility he can I think he's great after the catch I I would I wouldn't call him running back esque after the draft or after the catch but he can definitely run with the ball after the catch we saw him Agreed. we saw him on multiple occasions on film literally change fields and be able to make I would say solid yards after that top traits yes that might have been Kent State. But but there's there's plenty of examples of him getting like the tunnel screens and the bubbles yeah. and and playing very well off of those and you know some some slants but uh and and you know shrugging defenders off and I think he's quicker when the ball's in his hands than not in his hands yeah he does a good job transitioning as a runner when he gets the ball in yeah, his hands agreed yeah I would I would agree that he's a pretty solid after the catch I don't know. I don't know if maybe he gets maybe too much credit for it or maybe Butler doesn't get enough. I don't know one of those two, but it's definitely a plus. I think I, I can agree with that. And I, I like and the I th- big, the big, the weight in this, the 95th percentile weight and the, and the, and the strength definitely show up when the ball's in his hands and he's moving around. Yeah. And I too, like you, Matt, I, I'm impressed with his ball skills in tight quarters. You know, he seems to have a good, wherewithal where the ball's coming and he he really does well in a tight contested arena which is where he usually is yeah is right because of his inability to separate would be my i don't know if that was my first impression but you get that impression after watching the tape you're like man this guy doesn't ever really get that much separation from these defensive backs and he gets some late and he also doesn't need a ton because he's a great separator has the good hands and uh (laughs) But you're right. So is that is that a major cause for concern? The fact that he might can't separate. Des couldn't separate. I think there's the. I mean, the, Des separates late. Well, you were you were t- well, and, and that's really kind of all that matters. Um, I think he has decent field awareness, uh, Harry. Um, I think you were you were talking about it off air, and we were talking about uh, kind of how like a lengthier receiver is the kind of the separation. We like to say that a lot. Right. Harry, Harry is not quite at the threshold of being lengthy enough to necessarily, but I think you were bringing up a decent point of saying how he uses his strength at the end of routes right. to create a little bit of extra separation. And he doesn't need much because he is so good in traffic, in contention when the ball's in the air, like it's his ball. He jump, he jumps well. He times the jumps well when it's in traffic. It's, a lot of guys will be like, eh, it's kind of my ball. Whose ball is it? Like when it's up in the air, it's his ball. Most of the time, it's Harry's ball. He definitely has a my ball mentality. And I think his best play, his best move is the back shoulder fade. He really crushes that. Does he separate a ton? No. But when you're 228 pounds and you're that strong, all you have to do is just turn away from the defender and you've gained a little bit of separation, which is what you see in the NFL because there's just not that much separation. And I agree, the strong vertical jump. Uh, and his ability to high high point drink uh, the ball is, is usually pretty good. So, <clears throat> uh, would you say there was any positive regression? Drink. <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I, I mean he crushed all three years. Yeah. That's the thing about this guy is he was had a bunch of positive regression. Right. No, 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 no. Wait, is that a thing? You can't positive. Oh, you sure? Regress. You sure can. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's why we drank. Right. Okay. Uh, but. The, the, I would say the other thing is, like, is he slower than his 40 time? Because the 40 time was a 4 five, 3 which isn't the worst. It is, I guess, below average based on uh, that that stat there. It's, he's in the 45th percentile. But it's 
It's not a four four. It's not a four five five. It's a four five three. You know, it it's, counts. It's faster than it's faster than people thought he was going to run. People were expecting him to run in the four right. sixes. Yeah. they looked at that as basically a positive right. for this guy. Yeah. That was a huge win for him. Right. Yeah. When because when you saw on DK on tape, I mean, yeah, the guys, the guy was a probably. I mean, four three three was a great number regardless. But right. People knew he was going to be fast. I don't know that they knew he was going to be that fast, but you're right. They did know he was going to be fast, and they were excited about it, and he crushed it. But, I mean, the fact that a lot of people were concerned about this guy's speed before the combine tells me that he, he's probably a little slower than what he even ran. And, I mean, you don't ever see him running away from anyone. He doesn't not, have not a second really. year. Unless he broke two or three tackles and there's nobody else to tackle him is typically the only time when he's really kind of running away from, from people. Um, so I don't know any, uh, what, what else you guys got? What do you, what do you see from him in, in the route tree? We kind of touched on it for a second, but so I, I think, you know, we kind of talk about DK's route tree being a, very limited. I, I don't think it's nearly as limited as what, uh, I don't think Harry's, uh, tree is nearly as limited as, uh, Metcalf's there, but I, I don't think he had like some crazy route tree. It was a lot of the similar things happening. Like he right. did run a lot of tunnels and bubbles. Sure, he had some slants, but yeah, and and a couple of digs. Um, he looked good but, on a crossing route. He can sit well in zones. But I mean. for the most part, it seemed like he was winning on on fades and and nines and a lot of a lot of tunnels and bubbles and a couple of comebacks. And I don't think it was a super expansive route tree. Now the thing that you do like is that it was from left to left slot, right slot, right. So yeah. he was moving all around and doing, you know, some different things. Yeah, and I, th I think that his ability to play all over the field is definitely a huge win for him because I think he could play well in the slot in the NFL because he's not going to be a guy who's going to be your downfield burner. He's going to be your possession guy who right. wins with his strength. He wins with his right. his ball skills, and if he can, if he's going to be, I, I'm not. He, if he's going to be Michael Thomasian. Then that's fine with me. That's I mean, one of the comps. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a bit strong of a I comp. I do too. Yeah, I think the comp I just looked up. I was showing with Casey was that something I just thought of is Allen Robinson. Yeah, I think there's well, a lot of similarities there. Compared to Des there. Bryant, and Des Bryant's comp was Allen Robinson. Robinson and vice yeah, versa. exactly. So I think that's a. But Herm Edwards said he he, he reminded him of Des Des Bryant. That's his coach. Yeah, but I mean, Allen Robinson wins downfield when he when he was at the Jags. He won downfield with his with his ball skills. That's one of the best things he his did. Body his, control. His body is. control exactly. So if you can if you can get Allen Robinson out of Nikhil Harry, I think that's a huge win. I don't think he quite is going up in the air like Allen yeah, Robinson but Al, does. You, but you know what Allen Robinson's forty time was at the combine? It's probably slower than his. Four six zero. Yeah. Yeah. Well I do I I don't know what I can't speak to Allen Robinson's route running ability at that point. It was at, strong. At it was college. It, it was career, strong. It was but strong. But I'm, I think it's bad. and that's one of the reasons. And then he that worked I, on that nonstop when right. he got into the pros. And we with, we uh, talked a lot about that. Allen Hearns. Uh, yeah, well, him and Hearns worked on it a lot, and that's one of the things that I really, really like about Allen Robinson is that I think his route running is super crispy, and I think that's something that lacks a little bit in Butler's or sorry. Um, Harry's game here is that I don't think he's the best route runner. Like I think there's definitely some room for improvement. Um, it's good enough, but it's not great. Right. It's good enough, certainly, to win in college, and I think it'll translate pretty well to the pros. But I think he has to get better at. He could use some seasoning in that in that aspect for sure. Um. So I, basically, my a, a big thing for me is like when he's uh making his release at the line or maybe breaks at the top of routes. Like it, he's there's too much pitter pattering with the feet. I, I was joking with these guys and I said sometimes it looks like he's the Flintstones <laughs> trying to start their car, like. <laughs> You know, yeah, and, and to me, I don't love that. Um, no. but that, that's that's a technique thing that you can work on, I think. And, and yeah, he just like takes like 10 different da -da 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 -da, and then he goes left, like, right? Every time he just needs some coaching up, that's all. And yeah. sure. and, and I, I don't know what kind of and he also changed offensive systems in this last year with right, little big, good old Herm there. So, you, I mean, we'll see what happens. You can't coach the things that he does really well right exactly. now. There's a, some good in, intangible ability there, like, I think. And I just talk shit on his route running, but you likened it to it while we were talking pre pre show here. I think one of the things that he does well is when he's running a nine or a fade, he gets his corner to kind of bend in towards the numbers a little bit more and leaving his quarterback more space to get him to that sideline kind of back shoulder ball a little bit. And I think Harry does that time and time again. And then he's so good at the contested catch point, even on underthrown balls, like it's his ball. So I think he does a really good job with that. Yeah. And you got to like the versatility. You guys, you touched on it. He plays all over the field. I think he does a lot of work from the slot. And I, I like him in that role. I mean, 
in today's NFL, these players need to move all over the place. And and like you said, off air, I think he can win outside, and I think he can also probably excel in the slot with a little bit of off coverage. A lot of people are saying that's maybe where they would like to see him for the right. most part. I think right. something that was underrated with these wide receivers is I really like Harry's blocking. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty solid. I mean, the, you can only find one game in 16, and that my first impression was this isn't very good, but he was a freshman. And then you see him from 17 to 18, and it improved every year. Yeah. And he was really getting after it, and I, I definitely think that's a plus for sure. He's also really durable, like really no – Yeah, nothing. I think he had a leg injury in Colorado that he picked up. He was like hobbling for a minute, uh, but he gutted it out the rest of the way. I think they had a bye week the next week, and he didn't miss any time. Um, but, I mean, he had three straight years of, of a ton of production – um, he does some work in the punt return game, so I mean that's that that's a good like sign that. for me with 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 agility. If I can see a wide receiver sure. back on punt return, especially when you're only running four five three, I mean most of your punt returner guys are guys running your, your electric, four threes, your four fours. Kind of guys. But if you can get a stocky guy running four five three and being your punt returner, I mean that's either saying a lot about his agility or a lot about your team's overall speed. So <laughs> well, could be could be one of two things, but I think it it you know. It likens, definitely speaks to his run after the catch. Right, ability. that's what I was going to say. I say it likens to one of the points that you know you guys made earlier of his run after the catch ability being pretty good. Is you know he may not be the fastest guy on the field. I think he's a little faster with the ball in his hands, and he sees the field well when he has it in his hands, and he's a tough bring down. So that leads to where you know it's, it is a good thing to see him punt return. You could yeah get gain early value, and we we always talk about the special teams play of, of a person can get you more reps on an NFL field quicker if you can excel in that area. I don't think with where he's going to be drafted at that's no, not I don't think it's an issue. I no, think, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, I think he, I, 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 I think he comes in. I think he comes in as a no a yeah, wide sure. an NFL team's wide receiver too. Agreed. Maybe three on a solid wide. And like if he gets drafted by like this, let's say he goes to the Steelers or something like that. I mean, yeah, he might be their three there, but I mean, I think at, that's his floor. But yeah, I think he steps in right away as a as a NFL wide receiver too. One, I think one of the last things I'll say is a little bit of the slight worry is that I'm not not 100% sure about the press coverage. Sometimes I'm not really sure what's going on. And I think sometimes you're not sure if he's blocking or just getting jammed up for a while. Yeah. And I think at the next level, you'll have faster and, and more adequate D backs and you'll see them maybe with the ability to kind of squat down on them a little bit more because they're not super scared of being burnt off that jam and him beating him deep because he's not super elite with the long speed. So it could be something that, you know, be a, a slight concern yeah but overall really really like what harry's doing and i think the intangibles of of his game are uh very solid yeah i think uh i don't know i don't know how much to worry about the separation i i think i guess he's big enough that that he should be fine and maybe they work him in the slot to get him off some press and get him against weaker corners as well there too yeah yeah smaller all right well we'll save the, we'll save the uh the fantasy breakdown for the – we're about to go talk about uh, Hakeem Butler. So check that out on the on the uh, next uh, – we're going to take a little break here. Yeah, and then we're going to put them all in a ranking. And we'll, we'll talk about them fantasy-wise and where we like them and, and maybe where they stack up against some running backs if anyone's interested in – who you taking at one one or whatever? I don't know. We can talk about all we'll, that. We'll have a, a, a thorough rankings discussion afterwards. Could, little, could be contentious or pretentious. Bum bum bum. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll be back. We're going to break. <laughs> this is the FF Dynasty's married to the game. Like a blowout. Well, that was two that pops. Was two pops for one. For the for the price of one. That what was, was that? Two for one plums. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't have these. My plums. <laughs> plums. <laughs> All the school children standing in line. Can I trade you from a Twiggy? No, these are my plums. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a good double 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 dip uh, pop there. We had a nice first one, and then that that had some. I don't know what sounded like a blowout. It sounded like a. You blew a tire on the highway. Hmm, that was good standard pop. Yeah, pretty I, I, standard issue. I get yeah, I, could, I, I give that a good seven, seven, seven two. 
Yeah, about to say seven. I mean, what seven is this, one. What is this, amateur hour? <laughs> yeah, over flat here? scores. Look, if that's your first score you've ever given anyone, then well, I mean, you're allowed to give a seven point oh. No. Seven zero. You give me just go seven one or six nine. Okay, nice. <laughs> Seven and three eighths. Join the conversation. <laughs> you can rate our pops or cracks on the Twitters at the FF Dynasty, or we all have individual handles. Our guest uh, and well, second second week in a row, and uh, also a Charlestonian, Matt Foreman. You can find him at Fat Mormon on Twitter. You can find Jay Wayne at Jay Wayne's World, and I am at IMC Myers. We got the third uh, leg of our tripod here. We're going to go Hakeem Butler of our wide receiver talk. Hmm. Did you have something, Jay? Wayne? Well, I was going to say, if you're on YouTube, definitely hit subscribe, like, thumbs up, comment make in the section below. Make sure you do that. Shout out to Big Co. Out another week. Yeah. Getting, getting, he said he said he was thinking about coming, but had a bit of a baby brain and really just wasn't processing things super quick. And we know, you know, Big Co. Likes, uh, likes to get it on on these mics. So <laughs> Didn't think he could give 110%. <laughs> he didn't. Which is very understandable. Right. Can't imagine. All Not right. looking forward to that aspect of it. I'm going to go Hakeem <laughs> Butler. <laughs> very guttural there. Yeah, yeah. The All catch right. radius of a condor. We got some combine stats for my man. Oh, all the all the combine stats you want? In the, uh, w- all, we're reading all our combines. We're watching all our videos. We're getting all our stats right off the FF Dynasty website. Go over there and check all that out. And then after we have um, audio on them, we post that over there. So you can get everything you want for all the prospects that we've done. All their uh, combine scores, all their stats, all their videos, and everything we've said about them right on the player page. So be yeah. sure you check that out. Um, Absolutely. All right. So Shall we? Let's do it. Six foot five, three eight. Did you notice that everyone's size today was, was three all eight? three eights? Yeah, yeah. so ra- so random. <laughs> yeah, well, they were apparently handing out a lot of three eighths that day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so six five, two twenty seven, ninety eighth and ninety fifth percentile. He's a large human. Wingspan that of a pterodactyl or a condor. <laughs> Thirty five was- and a quarter. Uh, or sorry, eighty three and. Th- is that three A's? Seven. Seven A's. Seven A's. 84. Basically rounded up the 84. 98th percentile, arm length, 35 and a quarter. 99th percentile. That's a number they don't like to throw around too much. Yeah. Hand size, 10 and three quarter. Boy, got them big hands. Big hands. You know what big percentile. hands means? Big shoes. Big gloves. Big gloves. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they were on the same page. Page. You would have to have big feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I'm sure he's at least a size 15. I would hate to have what to if, buy clothes. What if, what if, if he had like tall? a size seven shoe? <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's no chance. There's, there's no ch- there's the, but he does have quick feet. So maybe, maybe. four, four, eight, forty, sixty fourth percentile. Mm. Only sixty four. Huh? Pretty, pretty fast for how big he is. I bet the height adjusted speed score. Oh, quality. <laughs> strong to quite strong. Vertical jump. Thirty six inch. Not a great leaper. 57 percentile. But that wingspan and the length make up for the good leaping ability. Broad, broad jump. jump. 128, 88th, and bench press 18 reps. Tough with those long arms to get 18th reps up there. We yeah. should get a bench press adjusted wingspan. <laughs> <laughs> a wingspan? You mean a wingspan adjusted bench press? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Nailed so it. It's a long way to go with that. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> that's Such a pterodactyl. pterodactyl. <laughs> Spelled with a P. Crazy. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> who knew? <laughs> You can, I can never get the autocorrect on that, but I'm yeah. just, I always forget just the P. Trying to spell it ends up spelling pneumonia. There was a, an incident in high school where, uh, I don't know if I should share this on air or not, oh, but there was a sexual, oh, right. a sexual move where somebody pulled a pterodactyl oh. in front of a group of people. Oh, some, is that some, like the bat wing? Some, some questionable floozy in high school got, uh, they start, started doing sexual things at a party in the middle of everyone. And uh, my friend will leave all the names out of this thing <laughs> while he was having intercourse, pulled up the sheets and started waving them around <laughs> like a pterodactyl and going, rah, rah. therefore named as a sexual move called the pterodactyl. Did he get that official on urban dictionary or I don't know, but Ex- it's something forever. Se- there was also somebody commentating while this was going on. I've, I've was, always wanted to go to an Eyes Wide Shut party. <laughs> it but. was interesting. 
It was interesting. If Big Co was here, he definitely would have cut this and made it scrap oh, well. all that. Old Eastern Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. All righty. All right. I didn't know if we needed that story or not, but. Oh, it was definitely, definitely needed. <laughs> definitely definitely needed. needed. I feel much better about Hakeem Butler now. I mean, I might go home and try it when I get home. So, <laughs> I mean. Usually you like to perform it right at the climax moment. So it all really. Really, really, really there with gusto. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, if you have to keep going after that, it's not going to... Yeah, yeah, you, yeah it's, you crescendoed. Yeah, and then, right. The, the, mood, the mood's killed after that. Yeah. yeah. And, and furthermore, your wife's going to be like, what the fuck was that, man? Right. <laughs> it's pretty much over, so you better you better have crossed the finish line. All right. So good old, good old uh, Kama Sutra there. Yeah. Jesus. Anyway, Hakeem. <laughs> Hakeem. I don't think it's Hakeem, but okay. <laughs> What do we got on this guy? Where should we start? I mean, it's the biggest knock is the no production, right? Limited production. Limited production and, and late breakout age. I think he's got more catches than DK does. More, more. That's true. More production than DK. But DK, you know, ran four three three. So, right. I mean, I guess that's what you're into. Guys who are fast. I've seen that 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 story play out a lot. That's true. Yes, yeah, John Ross about that. Right. Mm. So Hakeem Butler. He's like two of John Ross, though. Didn't obviously has the late breakout age. John Ross 2.0 <laughs> has the late breakout age. So a does lot that of, mean you're out? There's no late late break, breakout age. Is that is that a big is that a, so is that but, a but but college dominator 43.5 80th percentile. So pretty strong. And in the 97th percentile of yards per reception. Strong. According to player profiler dot com. Huh. So that's pretty good. Got to be. This A dot is I don't, <laughs> through the roof. Through the roof. I don't think that's enough, though, because of the college dominator or the, because of the breakout age. Late right? breakout age. It's it's a so factor. What, so is that, does that, what is that? Is it but deal, they're, they're kind of level breaker. itself out. No, it's not a deal breaker. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but Shut that right back in my face. <laughs> definitely something to be mindful of. Like I said, it's not like, oh, man, it's not, this is, this is. This is written in stone where if you don't have this, you're just you might as well just throw them out with throw the baby out of the bathwater. But I mean, it's something to consider. OK, so so again, like the breakout age on the positive side, the breakout age on the negative side could be a maybe a deciding factor in making a decision for you. Sure. I mean, it's something like I said, I don't, it's something something that I'm considering, but something that I'm not. Like, oh, it's 30th percentile, 21.3. My big my bigger concern with the late breakout age is why the late breakout age and I mean, we're talking about alan lazard here guys right alan lazard sure we'll, we'll we'll get to that point in a second but i think the bio and maybe somewhat of why the later breakout age kind of go hand in hand here with hakeem butler yeah i mean you did a pretty good job running through that off air um you want you want any part of this bio or let's go you ready to go let's do it all right so around the age of 16 hakeem butler's uh mom passes away Mm -hmm. uh, from cancer, I believe. And she was like a work, work all the time, nonstop. They grew up in a really bad part of Baltimore. Yeah, they were surrounded by drugs and violence. The father left at an early age. He, he said he doesn't remember what age he was when, the, when his dad left. And then his mom was diagnosed. And so he had to like pick up the slack. And he was kind of like raising his brothers and sisters while his mom was going through treatment. And he was like making sure she got her medicine. And she was still working a ton I think she worked at the post office. There was times where she didn't even eat. She she always made sure her family got provided for, but they were really poor. And then she did, you know, tragically pass away. And so at that point, uh, him and his brothers and sisters moved to Texas with his cousins. Right, which were uh, the Harrison twins that famously went to Kentucky. Yep. So um, good, de good, decent genes and bloodline there. Um, but... So he moved. They they moved in over there, um, and so some of the issue here is that obviously they move into Texas. Texas football is a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, so when people transfer, they think they're transferring for athletic reasons, and this was really had nothing to do with that. Right. Um, it had to do with you didn't really have anywhere else to go, and this was the best case uh, situation for him. So he went over there. Um, so he had problems starting, uh, so he was age 16 when he went over there. So his, uh, junior and senior year, he only played like six games in both of those, uh, years as for playing football right? because he was having problems transferring and, and he also wasn't a great student was having problems, uh, in that area. Right. And so, well, with the, with the basketball thing, like 
obviously his cousins play a ton of basketball, and so right. he played a lot of basketball. And he with wasn't them. a big football player to begin with. He was more basketball was his thing, right? And I think I don't remember who it was. Maybe it was his brother talking about how as a younger guy he wasn't that athletic. He was always like taller and and more developed than other people but he didn't have like that good coordination and when he started playing basketball it helped improve his footwork and he started to learn how to use that frame and grow into it and then he took that over to the football field right and <clears throat> so became made, made well with it became a decent uh high school player but uh wasn't getting a ton of reps didn't didn't play all I usually play about a 10 game season in high school and then if you go any further it could be up to 15 games um, so he was missing, you know, four or five of those games in each of his junior and uh, senior seasons, transferring over to Texas, and really and, struggled with grades and eligibility. Right, was taking care, still taking care of his family. Family, um, and then he's playing with uh, the the guy alongside of him is went to Kansas, I believe it was Steve Sims Jr. I think that's his name. He, so he was a full ride to Kansas, and he had they had other good playmakers all around him. So limited. Uh, exposure in high school um and then like you said wasn't quite developed was 175 pounds and about the size he is now the height um and didn't get recruited didn't right. get any scholarship offers from basically any school yeah so two-star recruit uh the recruiter in texas who or uh, for iowa state who was in charge of kind of texas is their running back coach which is coach lou which is lewis i and i and i'm not it's a y e n i ayani Something we'll along that. those that lines. Good. But he Decent. calls him he calls him Coach Lou, and that's kind of who found Hakeem Butler and saw some tape and wanted to get him in there and then went and saw him play basketball and was like, This dude's a monster. He's a freak. Let's let's see what we can do. They didn't have any scholarships for him. They had some guys eventually transfer and opened up some scholarship spots for him. Um, and eventually kind of got him under contract via signing day once all this kind of stuff broke but before that where they he couldn't really get any room for him on the team he started telling his buddies about him of like hey somebody's got to take this guy because he, he could be a really good player um and eventually it works out was he recruited as at multiple positions or so he wasn't recruited at multiple positions but this this particular coach and multiple other coaches were saying that this guy could have been a tight end he could have been a defensive end like he's got the bend and the athleticism to play multiple other positions if he wanted to and there were some coach there were some teams at the combine that asked him to test with the tight ends and he was like nah i'm good right so he ended up with with um offers from houston offers from new mexico state and then offers from iowa state and he eventually took iowa state um and got over there but was like i said it was 180 by the time he got to the the collegiate level Right. Grades struggling, so maybe wasn't an eligible, uh, maybe wasn't super eligible. Redshirted his first year, wasn't big on the weight room, didn't like it, and then. But people um, hate that about him that he had to redshirt. Right, it's like he redshirted. How good could he be if he had to redshirt? Well, there could have been multiple factors. Like I said, not right. quite Basically ready, everything not built, and and maybe academically wasn't quite there. Um, this guy Rudy Wade takes over as a strength coach. And Butler really takes a liking to him. Hated the weight room previous, but as soon as this guy takes over, he starts seeing how like the gains and starts actually liking working out. And All this, about them gains, bro. This really changes the way that Butler views working out and doing all this other stuff and now you can see butler leaving college coming in at 180 and leaving at 227 yeah that's a hell of a jump and then so the breakout age might be a little late because maybe this guy had some underlying circumstances that didn't allow him to fully you know blossom and get to the level that he needed to be at so we could be just making a pile of excuses for him because i like him um but there's there's definitely some things in here that lean to the fact of maybe it did take him a little longer to blossom and, and really turn in. And he didn't, did he beat out Alan Lazard in 2017? Absolutely not. Um, but he played as the, the two over there. Lazard was kind of entrenched. And, and in that uh, year, the coaches are saying like, this might, this is the most athletically gifted guy on our team, but he's just not quite ready. And, and Lazard kind of kept his, his role on the team. And did Lazard absolutely crush it? His, Senior year, no, he had 10 touchdowns, like 70 catches, under 1,000 yards. And meanwhile, Hakeem Butler's over here averaging 17 yards a catch, scoring seven touchdowns, almost 700 yards, and 41 receptions. So not play, the worst. It's not, not like the worst. No and then had a hell of a 2018. They challenged him to step up to be the man, and I, I think he accepted the challenge and and, and did everything uh, really well. So 
I, I think explaining some breakout age right there for Hakeem Butler, there is a little bit of uh, some pause story, like, I don't story wanna, to tell behind the breakout age. I don't want to miss out on potentially what Hakeem Butler could be because of his breakout age. You know, right. that's basically what I'm trying. That's what I want to get across. All right. So now that we've we've told the long bio and the long story on him, what what would be some other things that you liked or disliked about Hakeem Butler? I thought he was great playing all over the field. I mean, the guy lines up left, right, slot. I mean, you guys can I mean, you guys can attest to that the guy was all over the field. Um, he's great in the contested cat situations, and that makes a lot of sense with his basketball background, where he was probably playing center, power forward, where. Right. He was getting those rebounds. That's exactly what he was doing. He was just doing with the football in the air, though. Um, I thought he actually ran pretty crisp routes. He had some nice, clean breaks, especially for a guy at, at 6'5 and 225 pounds. I mean, that's some some solid move, some solid movement skills there. Um, I, I I thought his release was good, not great. It's better than Harry's, not as good as DK's, but definitely some some he can use his he can use his 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 length to be able to get off of guys, and he doesn't get stuck there, but. In certain situations, he would get stuck because of his size, and that's something I'll have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that he was able to separate downfield and in, and in in the intermediate areas, but he can also use his body control as well with that big size to be able to get open. So, um, a lot of things you a lot of things you guys you guys um, made some good points. You guys can there's a lot of things like about Hakeem um, and. Uh, <laughs> People who have him high, I mean, I'm not saying I'll have him low, but people who have him as their number one wide receiver, I I, I can see the reasons why. I mean, it's not like it's coming out of left field. So right. I think there's a lot of things to like about Butler. There are, I mean, but there's also some inconsistencies to his game. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna act like it's perfect. That's I mean, know? a lot of these guys, you would say the main thing is to be more consistent, and I think that's been the underlying theme all night. And I think it doesn't change with Butler at all. And there right. are some really big times where you face palm. Right, like with watching Butler, the going, first dude, what the fuck? The first game I watched was Iowa, 2018, and it's like he had three for 35, and it, and I, I was just, it looked like things weren't crisp, and it and it didn't look like looks like the he was a little was lethargic and, and rounding things off, and, right? And it's like, but then you watch like the second game, and he's he's like a total different player, and then you see him with these sharp cuts, and you see him separating, and you see him with the hands, and there were a couple bad drops in against the uh, Iowa game, but then like. Maybe he was a little hurt. You know, he was a little banged up throughout the season. And so maybe that could be an testament for why he was a little up and down. But I, I can't act like he wasn't up and down. But yeah, th- there are definitely times when you see the precision and At the te- te- technical prowess. And like, right. You want to speak to the whip. Route, well, well, right. Before before we even get to that kind of stuff, like I, I want to say that, you know, you watch some of the bad game, like Kansas State, for instance, is a terrible game. And like I've seen people say, was this your wide receiver one and pull clips from the Kansas State game of him miff- whiffing and more muffing balls uh, in, in that game. But then he also like a lot of the times where you see him have those face palm moments in that same game, he'll make you jump out of your chair and be like, holy shit. Right. That was ridiculous. Right. And, you know, I. Obviously, I would like to see him clean all that kind of stuff up. And I, I think drops are something that are a clean upable offense. Like you can you can get on that jugs machine. You can squeeze the ball a little harder. And I don't I don't think it's like it's, it's not as bad as Metcalf. I don't think. I mean, I, 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 I don't know how many drops Metcalf or how many drops anybody really had because it's just not a stat that I can find. But I, just I, I know just pro football focus looking for it. Just still even can't find watching it. in the games that that Butler has. I know he has to have a lot of drops. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with Butler is he lets the ball get on him too much. Agreed. Like that's like and and that's disadvantageous for him because when he does it sometime I saw in the Washington State game where he was letting the ball get on him he, instead of reaching out and using that big frame to be able to instead of body catch and get his hands out there. Right. He sits there and waits on the ball and it causes a pick six in that game. Yeah. Oh, he definitely and he kind of quits on that route a little bit. Yeah. He, he could have came a little stronger back to the ball. It definitely and but it does get called back because the dude showboats yeah uh, mm. but yeah no you're right you are right it, and it, times but, but where, then again uh, like just like but i you'll said see a other ago, plays where there was a play where i saw with him and he just reaches out with his he just reached out with one hand and just 
grabs the ball in the air and it's just like why isn't he doing that on every play right. i just don't know if he's if he's taking plays off or he, if this he's just inconsistent like i yeah. just want to if if i could see the if i could see the best you know, keen butler i could see then yes he would be the wide receiver one in this class but i'm just not seeing that consistently enough yeah. and i'm seeing too I mean, you much see bad. It, but you just don't see it i don't see it enough. all the time i don't yeah. see it enough well right. again like i said about the k-state game and all those other games like the same thing in the washington state game in that bowl game like He's he plays he has that shitty run of things in the beginning of the game and then he absolutely beasts them boys at the end of that game like he gets mad and he is clowning them boys by the end of that game so it's just like I agree I agree a hundred percent with you like I I don't know what he was doing right there maybe he w- d- didn't think it was coming his way and then when he did he was like ah uh, yeah uh, whatever yeah but there's also some times where I wish he would lay out yeah there's there was a couple tries to run underneath it I'm like ah come on. Lay out there, bubba. right? Yeah, I but think, I think he's I think he's still kind of learning how to be like the elite guy all the time. I mean, I think he's got the traits, and he showed you that the top. He showed you what he can do, and then he just needs to keep working to get it more consistent. And I think I don't think we've seen the best of Keem Butler. No, and I think that I think that's if you're prognosticating that out, I think that's something you have to take. You're like, if I can project this, what can I see? And if you see a the if you see a I don't even. I can't even remember a guy who's been this fast and this big. I mean, six. I mean, he's. I want to say he's. I wouldn't. This sounds like a bit of hyperbole, but he sounds like a. He's almost like a faster Mike Evans. I mean, right. A, a, and a, Mike a, Evans had drop issues, right? That he's had to clean up, even in the NFL. Yeah, and I, I think the one thing that you can say with Mari Cooper struggles with drops, like with Butler, is that his quarterback play has not been great. I right. mean, and it th- got and the true freshman this year at the end of the season was the best thing he's had all year. I think Purdy yeah. was Purdy's going to be good. I, I mean, think. in their biggest upset of in 2017 when they were playing against Oklahoma, they had a linebacker playing quarterback. <laughs> yeah, um, Jacob Park is probably the worst quarterback I've ever seen play football. <laughs> he was starting for them sure. last year in 2017, and he and, was brutal. And the other thing is, that offensive line is terrible. I mean, if you yeah. watch any Dave Montgomery film, you've seen this before, but I mean, I mean, within two seconds, I mean, there's guys in the back that right. almost every yeah. single play. Which is, I mean, way to bring up Dave Montgomery. Yeah, huge bonus of watching all the Hakeem Butler film is that you get to see how fun Dave Montgomery is again. Yeah, just cutting yeah. the boys up. But like, he had a great game in the Washington State game where if he's given some openings, I mean, he's going to run for some yards. He just needed to get an opening, and that offensive line is no bueno yeah well, all right should we take it to the uh yak on fleek yeah well so i i i would i think just to weigh my two cents in on what he does i think the route running is pretty good i think he wins all over the field whether it's right slot left slot outside left left outside right outside and i think he wins it you said it uh but Multiple i think he levels. wins at all the different levels as well like so i i think that's awesome and the big thing for me with hakeem butler is is i, I like I really like the traits, and I think the agility that he shows for the bigger guy is better than the other two guys that we've talked about, and he just seems loose. I mean, there's not too many 6'5 guys. You mentioned it before about the whip routes. Like, there's not too many 6'5 guys out there running whip routes out there. I didn't see either one of the two guys we talked about earlier run them, and he ran them, and you saw the hips sink down, and you saw him kind of get outside, and it's just not something that happens a lot. So I think that speaks really well to the agility that, uh, Hakeem Butler has um, and I, I think you see it out on the field he has good crossing routes he's he just doesn't maybe he doesn't have a super diverse route tree either but he is kind of all over the field doing all sorts of different things which is another thing that really weighs heavily on me when I'm watching uh, Hakeem Butler and the the run after the catch ability I know everyone loves Harry and I know a lot of people like Metcalf but I, like this guy's a, just a, a menace once the ball's in his hand physical Definitely physical for a guy yeah. his size. The get off me, the stiff arm, just the balance. He doesn't get tripped up from behind. Like he just, to me, he just looks like a beast with the ball in his hands. Like yeah. better, like like I said when we were talking about um, Nikhil. Hey! Uh, Had to squeeze one more in. Huh? Yeah, like I don't. I think either either Harry gets too much notoriety for his yak, or Butler doesn't get enough because this thing, this dude is filthy. Yeah, a lot, a lot of big stiff arms. A lot of look at not, that Oklahoma game. Oh well, he's yeah, he's he just running through dudes. Shoved all those dudes to the ground like it was. The boys could not tackle him. So that's just another another part of the game that I that I like of his. I mean, and I think he's got a good late separation. I think he uses the push off well, whereas DK 
he's pushing off and getting called for it, whereas Butler can can give right. you that subtle, which you have to cheat because the DB is going to be cheating. Right. And I think, I he's, a, I think he's a pretty decent that cheater shit. late. Like all that you have to be good at cheating, right? And like if he's that big, he does a pretty good job of not fully extending the arm. Yeah, and, and that's a lot of arm to extend. So you're right. gonna see that exactly, 10 times and 10. you see it with Metcalf a lot because he's yep. got fucking long arms. So when he extends, when he's kind of pushing off <laughs> late in the route, you see it. What? Just threw a random fuck in there. He got fucking long arms. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's true though. Like the good receivers. They cheat, but they keep yeah. the, they keep it short, and and right at the end of the route, they just they just check you. And the good DBs, they hold you, but they don't let you get ahead of them, so you can see the arm extended and being held. Right, like that's what that's what the next level is all about. Right. It's all about cheating, but and getting away with it as far as DBs and receivers go. Yeah, agreed. And I think Hakeem Butler does a, a, a fairly decent job of that most most of the time, for sure. One last thing that I'll say about Hakeem Butler is he is a joy to watch in the run blocking game. Like yeah. he is getting I think after that's a good, it. Uh, he, he blocks, he, he, blocks, he uses the length and he uses the strength. Well, he almost blocks too long. Like let him go out of bounds. The play's over. Let's get back in the huddle. Like, he's still running that dude down. Is he old, old big Mike out there. Excessive blocking, <laughs> excessive blocking. <laughs> Who's that? You ever seen the blind side? Oh, uh, okay. 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 <laughs> big I mean, Mike. Strong I've movie. Seen it like once. Oh, once? Once isn't enough. I mean, it's just long. seeing, uh, just seeing for Sandra Sandra Bullock in those white pants that she's wearing uh, as a blonde. <laughs> I think she's kind of redheaded in that movie. No, she's she? full on blonde. Is yeah, she? I thought blonde. she was like strawberry. Eh, no, more like more like banana. <laughs> more like banana. <laughs> I like my bananas spotty. <laughs> Uh, right. Did you just you just turn your nose up at a, at a I, you what do you eat green bananas? No, yeah. not a little spotty. That's a little a little bit. All right. It could get over it could get overwhelmed. Oh, for sure. It can get mushy. I'm fu- well, I don't want it mushy. I don't want it mushy either. But I want it I spotty. I want it right between firm and mushy. Isn't it weird that ripe? Right to me ripe sounds like it's it should be green. That's what you call it when it's like under Well, ready, tomatoes are green when they're not ripe, when they're not ready yet. So, I mean. But ripe means it's like pa- like a ripe banana has spots on it. Like it's past. It's No, I, I think that's only talking about if you have body odor. <laughs> if you're ripe, you're probably past your uh, expiration no. date there. Ripe is like when it's ready to eat, when you, when you squeeze a peach. Oh, I smell some ripe people at work every day, and I'm not ready to eat them. I can tell you that much. <laughs> when you squeeze a peach, and it's, and it's ready to go, or you squeeze an avocado, and it's giving you, it gives you a little, it's ripe. How the hell do we get the avocados <laughs> from Hakeem Butler? <laughs> I don't know, but ah. one Hakeem Butler a day is good for the hell. Welcome to Married to the Game. Yeah. <laughs> You've officially made it. So, strong run block. <laughs> strong. All right, let's take a break. <laughs> we'll rank these guys and we'll uh, bring this show to a conclusion. Is that you know real or fake? Was that we was at work and now <laughs> we're popping beers. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I don't know. I don't oh, know. It did, oh, the peanut gallery chimes in. They didn't that, like it. That that second part. Brad? Yeah. Brad? <laughs> I think you got some on Brad. Yeah, well, he, he likes a little beer on him. Uh sir, you're spilling everywhere. Yeah, well. Oh. Sorry. Just give me the damn number. <laughs> What you got, Matt? Here comes a world class pop. Call it right now. World Call him a shot. Uh, Call him a shot. World, world cat class. Oh, mm, all, one, all one sound. Yeah, none you, of that. You, you like the quick pop, and I. You know what? Maybe that, I should try that next time. That was a hefty quicker. Yeah, that was. I don't know what happened with that. That with that last one. That was just. That sounded like you had a blowout on the highway, <laughs> but that. But that. That was a. Uh, that was. That's up in the. Uh, the best of the the hall of uh, very good. <laughs> the hall of very good. <laughs> what are you gonna go? What are you seven? I'll, go, I'll give that seven six. I'll go seven nine. Whoa! I think that's the highest I score all, you've given I out. I almost went eight one. Whoa! Wow! But one enough. Uh, one enough delay. One oh, of, you need some more. You need some I more want, um, I want waterworks. Little, I want a little old faithful. <laughs> a little spray. Yeah. 
A little. Uh, I don't so- know why. I always get spray. I don't know. Why Sorry, I'm not have... much of a squirter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> welcome back. Again, you can find us at the FF Dynasty. You can find Matt at Fat Mormon on the Twitters. You can find Jay Wayne at Jay Wayne's World. You can find me at IMC Myers. If you're listening via YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button, thumbs up, and comment below. Please we do. We try to get back to you and holler and communicate with you. But uh, let's, let's get into ranking these guys. We've talked a little Harry. We've talked a little Metcalf. We've talked a little who? <laughs> <laughs> a little uh, DeKalen Zakaris of House Metcalf. Yeah. We and then that just guy. regular old Hakeem Butler. Hakeem <laughs> Butler. <laughs> So everyone else got are, something. I felt like I needed to give Hakeem a little. I, I don't know if that was the right, you know, thing to give him though. Well, what else was I supposed to give him? Hakeem Bustler, Joaquin, <laughs> Joaquin. <laughs> y'all, y'all remember when uh, when uh, Seth MacFarlane hosted the the Oscars? Gosh, that was such a good time. He, he made, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the he st- made fun of Joaquin Phoenix. He's like, <laughs> see, he's on his meds. Good to go. <laughs> This is what I thought. Well, I, hope I, he, I hope he gets back off his meds for the Joker I movie. Did, I just saw the trailer. It looked pretty good. It did look pretty good. I was good. pretty intrigued. I C-C, haven't seen it. Yeah, the very intrigued. <laughs> CCC, I'm very intrigued. <laughs> lot of, this is going to be a great, like, probably like great, like, three to four months of movies. We got we got um, uh, Avengers coming out. We got the Lion King live action. Aladdin, Aladdin. live action, maybe. You know what I mean? Give I Will Smith a chance. <laughs> We got the Joker movie coming out. In up in this cave, I was born and raised. You know, in this lamp, I spent most <laughs> of my <laughs> days. <laughs> Such a crick in the neck. You give a little homage. Like homage. A, you give a little homage. <laughs> Some homage. <laughs> I love to take any word that ends in A G E and turn it into homage. <laughs> All right. You must really like French cheese then. Fromage. Fromage. Kalen Bolas. So. As we've been doing, let's give the uh, we'll give guests first ranks. What do you we'll, got there? We'll go around. Or go, what do you got? P H A T Mormon, <laughs> fat Mormon. Cause I'm fat. I'm fat. Well, I'm really, really fat. <laughs> Was that a weird owl? Some weird owl. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. Covering some bad. I'm bad. Mm. Mm. Cric- Cric- crickets. Oh. Amish, Amish paradise, dude. <laughs> Weird um, Al when we were kids? Are you kidding me? I was, I'm not impressed. Did it get any better? I actually met him once. So I'll show you a picture later. Oh, oh yeah? Deal. We did, were waiting. Did he have that hat on? <laughs> no. He, w- <laughs> he wished he had this hat on. No, we met him. I was waiting in line at the... It was at the airport in... I think it was in Maui. He was waiting in line for the Alamo rental car shuttle. True story. Of course he was. He's... He's not going to spend that money. <laughs> <laughs> three days, three days later, met Adam Sandler. Oh, you're already on a heater. Oh, that was a that was that was a, that was a high. Just juice out the wazoo. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> My mother-in-law wished uh, Weird Al a Merry Christmas. <laughs> We're like Terry. He's Jewish. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. <laughs> no, she hit him with a Merry yeah, Christmas. I'm and, hitting everybody with Merry Christmas. And before that, she was like, "I don't think you're that weird." <laughs> Like that's his like that's not so weird Al. That's his persona. Average like, Al. Yeah. He probably was offended by that. Probably more so than the I'm Merry not Christmas. weird, huh? Watch this. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> we don't need another eyes wide shut story. <laughs> but I did I did I did like some <laughs> I did like some weird Al though. <laughs> they had a lot of good songs. Wow, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> like a surgeon. Um, fucking Plenty of people had a lot of good songs. I don't know if I put Al Weird Al Yankovic. Come sat alone on a bench in a park. He didn't. It just. He just. My changed. name was Forrest. Mm. He casually remarked, <laughs> I, "Waiting I, for a bus with his hand in his pocket." Sorry, everyone. Just we were almost out of here. Like a box. <laughs> Jesus, this it's is so worse good. than wrestling. Let's it's talk so about wrestling. Let's we'll get a little gold dust or a little Val oh, Venus, gold dust. maybe. <laughs> gold. A little Val Venus. Oh, oh, Val Any, Venus, sexual chocolate come in there. Sexual chocolate. He always has some ladies with him. Mm. Oh, it, was, it didn't get any better than Jr. and and Steve Austin. I mean, <laughs> you know, really, you, you know what's really sad? I thought Booker T. Washington was just a wrestler. I didn't know he was like a historical figure because of wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, Booker T. Washington, you mean like the wrestler? And the first, the first time I said it, like, no, he was like a historical figure. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, really blew the hat. Yeah, yikes. 
Old Booker T. All right, so who you got at number one, Matt? Yeah, quit avoiding the question, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me with a drop. Oh, you got a... Uh... <laughs> oh, wait, wrong one. Wrong one. You got to in keel. <laughs> yes. His hands are not freezing. Maybe sometimes. Maybe at times. But sometimes he catches a chill in the tips. Oh, I hate when I catch a chill in the tips. <laughs> <laughs> it gets all small and weird. <laughs> I was in the pool. <laughs> Little Costanza there. Yeah. <laughs> but I just I just feel like Harry has I'm talking about floor here and if I'm taking that much an investment of those guys, I want to try and I want to hit that double. If I can get a one on one and hit that double or triple instead of hitting a seven hundred foot home run with possibly with Metcalf, um I mm-hmm. think I'm going to try and take the floor. I'm a, I'm a little I wouldn't I'm not a gambler at, at that price range unless I unless I see things. But I think the other two have more questions than than Harry does. Agree. I, so I, I'm down with that. I'm not down with him having at number one, but I I understand the. I think he's the safest out of these bigger guys. And I haven't watched A.J. Brown yet. Um, but from what I understand, he seems to be a pretty safe fellow. Um, but Harry looks to Always be... Always wears a seatbelt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know. Harry seems to be pretty safe. And if you don't want to swing and miss, it's a decent shot at the 1-1, I suppose. Um, I like to look at maybe it a little differently. Let's just... I, I'm probably not going to take that 1-1 pick. No, I mean, if I have a one-one pick this year and it's not super flex, I'm probably trading back. I mean, I, I think I, I think that seems to be everyone's mantra this year yeah. when it comes to rookie picks. So it might be I, a little hard to. Yeah, I think it's gonna be hard to trade back, um, unless somebody's in love with a guy. Like if if DK starts slipping and a guy in your league really loves DK and you're sitting or there DK wondering. lands somewhere off. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's landing spot for these guys too. I I think the wide receivers are a little more open than the running backs are. Because um, like like there's a mock going on. I think it's called the simulation mock. We were just talking about it off air, and I think Miles Sanders went at 301 because he got drafted by the Panthers. I mean, uh, Miles Sanders went to the Panthers and David Montgomery to the Vikings. It's just like yeah. that would absolutely crush their values. So yucky. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, if any of these guys end up in some advantageous situations, maybe sure. like uh, in indie. Or uh, a Philly, Green or Bay. Green like if Bay. DK Metcalf went to the Packers I don't, for some reason, like just I saying. just don't see. Yeah, I don't see Green Bay taking wide receiver I don't either, that early but I'm just, because of right. Yeah, if you compare one of these guys with a with a with a young elite, quarterback, or yeah, good quarterback, or if the Chiefs are like maybe they think Tyreek Hill might be up against something here and maybe yeah, they or or, spend or, or some even money trying to because I heard there was a rumor. I read a rumor or an article somewhere that said that the Chiefs are trying to add a playmaker, whether it be through free agency or the draft. So if they bring in more of a possession guy because that's not what that's not what Watkins or Hill is about obviously they have Kelsey to to manufacture that but right. if they bring in another one of these guys I mean that's obviously something to consider but I think landing spots going to be big for these guys but I don't think it's the end of the world just because of I feel like there's lo- just a little more talent at wide receiver than there is at running back so do you have <laughs> Harry is your one one overall Without being able to like we like we all are feeling the same way, we would probably most likely trade out of the one one. Can't trade, so you can't trade. So just saying, not being able to trade if you had to make the pick. Yes, that's probably your one one. Yeah, I I just like that's a pretty not messing it up, and you know we say that a lot in startups. Yeah, I don't want to pick. You don't. I don't want to fuck it up. up. Right. So you right. Well, we'll have to mock it up before you fuck it up, and and you know. That's a that's a that's a good call, Jay Wayne. How do you feel about it? Well, I don't think even after after watching these three wide receivers, and maybe maybe one of them goes to a landing spot that I just can't turn away from. But I I don't think I can take a wide receiver one one or probably even one two. Like I think I got to go Jacobs and Montgomery before I take right. a wide receiver. But you basically know that you don't have to do that. <clears throat> I mean, but what? I do if I can't trade. Right. Well, if you can't trade, so you if you can't trade, you're 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 going that route. Yeah. I mean, unless they get, it's just a terrible landing spot. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I want the running back. All right. So, going with uh, rec- the receivers that we talked about here, who who would be your first guy to take here? <sighs> Man, I really I, I struggle with it. I don't know what to say. But I mean, what are we doing here? You know, what are we, we're playing? 
We're playing a game. We're playing for keeps. We're playing a game based on a game. I, I, most of us play for a fair amount of money here, so it's not like we're just in cheap, cheap leagues telling you what we think. You know, we should do in in a, in a league that doesn't have any merit to it. There's, there's long term implications here. I mean, I think I think I got to swing for the fence, and uh, I think I got to take DK Metcalf. And I think that it's not only a home run cut of epic proportion. But I think there's some safeness built into this dude based on his size and his his athleticism minus the three cone drill, the forty yard dash. I mean, I think you look at guys like Corey Davis and Sammy Watkins, or names you brought up at, off air. Like those guys continue to con- to hold their value. Now Sammy's actually <coughs> well, done a right. decent amount and, and, on the field, but and Sammy up until this year had well, he kind of started to finally decline. Finally, but, not, but and he's he, not. And, a, he's, and he declined like a little five bit. Five or six years in the league, now. but for the most part, he was really holding his value. And but Corey, Corey Davis, Davis is still holding his value. Because, hasn't done a ton because they have those good games where you see. Right. What could be, right. and it has all those other people really holding on, especially if you were in to begin with. Right. So, so all agree. DK Metcalf has to do is bust off a couple of long touchdown runs or catches, and people are going to be like, see, I told you, and, and there's going to be people that hold his value high. So I think that if you take him, you, you're you not only getting an awesome swing and a chance of a guy being just, you know, the next Calvin Johnson, I mean, it's, it's, it seems like the ceiling. You went there, huh? Seems like the ceiling. Okay pretty high ceiling i know that's Very, what's so intriguing the highest about of ceilings. This guy, which they, is why maybe i should take him at one one i mean they, they 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 basically called him they megatron they just they didn't even go human they just went right they went with a i mean alien life form i mean Actually, this guy De- robot decalin zakar sounds robot. like one of the dang dragons of Daenerys starborn <laughs> like he could be a freaking dragon <laughs> like <laughs> Matt is shaking his head at the moment. This dude is... Cash fan over here making references. <laughs> <laughs> what? It doesn't sound like a, a, a dragon's name? I just high point. Just drink. <laughs> uh, I just... I I could I could possibly take him 1-1 one, one if, if the... Well, I'll, you guys, I'll drink when I'm done talking. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, maybe you should take him at 1-1. One, one. I mean, it's the swing. It's the swing of all swings. And we like to play it safe in startups. And then I like to take some swings in a rookie draft. And I, we talked about this in a rookie draft. I think right. it was on a Patreon uh, show where we no, talked think, about. Well, yeah, I think you're right. I think talking you're right. about well, do you play it safe Risk or do you take swings and, and, and in, a, in a rookie draft? And to me, it comes down to the tiers of players and when is there a tier break and when does it make sense to take a swing? And I feel like it makes sense to take a swing because I think in a couple of weeks we'll know what these NFL teams think about them. But I'm pretty sure – He's probably going pretty high. Like he's probably going to be the first wide receiver drafted, and someone's probably going to reach up and swipe him because you have to reach to get him. Just like in a in a fantasy draft, you got to reach to get him, or you're not going to get him. Uh, I I think he's going to have the draft capital, and I think he's going to have people behind him from an athletic standpoint that want him to him want him to succeed. And when they see a little bit of success, they're going to be able to ride that for a while. And I think you could still get out at a minimal loss if you decided you didn't like him down the road. So I think there's some safeness yeah. in in him as well as the home run cut. Give me DK Metcalf. I, I, like, I, I didn't feel that way before today, but we came in here. We talked about all this. Yeah, that's what I got to do. I like all that. I th- I'll drink. I'm I'm pretty the most obnoxious <laughs> drink possible. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm i feeling all that. I like what you said, and I, I think that all has a, a ton of merit, and uh, and I, I think that was, taking one? was a pretty good... I'm, I'm going to take Akeem Butler at one. Yeah, that's fair. I like I like the traits. I like the fact that... I, like there, there's a whole bunch to be desired with with DK Metcalf that we're we're wanting mm-hmm. and we want it to be, and I, I just I see a good amount of it already with Butler. All the Absolutely. things that we talked about in his breakdown, I think there's some good agility there. I think he can win everywhere on the field. He can do. A lot of different things. He does absolutely 100% need to clean up the drops. Like that, That's a huge problem. But if you're drafting him at this point and where he's going to be drafted, which is probably, you know, moderately high, like, uh, you know. Top five probably is where if, you got to take If Butler him. goes to Baltimore, does your opinion change? 
I mean, yeah, I don't really like anybody in any receiver in Baltimore yeah. currently. Whoever they draft. So land obviously landing spot is going to be huge for any of these guys, yep. running back, receiver, tight end, whatever. But I agree with you. I mean, I think his game translate probably the most. He probably doesn't need a scheme. Right. Butler, that is, you know, he right. can kind of go play wherever in whatever. Yeah, so I, I, I really like him, and I like there's a, a pretty. I feel like there's you haven't seen the best Hakeem Butler, like uh, Mormon said, uh, Matt said here, and uh, and we've all kind of discussed. And I think the stuff you have seen has been really good, and I think there's still a level to go up with Butler. So I feel I feel decent putting him right now as my wide receiver one. Obviously, only having looked at these three guys, right. Um, but yeah. and I could go Butler right there too. I, I was debating on which one to take. But I feel I like your Metcalf discussion, and I feel kind of the same way that yeah. the, the value loss is going to be minimal for a while with him for at least a couple years. Um, and then you get the third year breakout of NFL wide receivers. I think that's still a thing. Yeah. All right. So who who's your two, uh, Matt? I'm going Butler. You're going Butler. I'm going Butler. So did we sway you today? Yeah, a little, a little bit. bit. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. What was the biggest factor? I think the biggest thing that... We gave him a reason for the breakout age. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest thing was that the his negatives that he has don't aren't as big as the negatives I see with DK. I think he shows that he can run the routes. He can be physical after the catch. Um, the, the hands inconsistency can be worked through. Um, like I said, I also said, like I said, I think his best game, his best tape is still yet to be seen. So um, I think there's a little higher floor on on Butler than there is on DK as well, too, just because of the injuries. Yeah. We okay. don't have the injury history. And I think that um, and his ability to play over the field too. DK only played outside. Butler can play all over the field and on the left. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he can. But so yeah. did you. Juju only played on the right in college at USC. Yeah. Yeah, but obviously that's scheme, and we are talked about we talked about the death about Ole Miss and their lack of creativity. We'll call it absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think I think Butler offers some some good upside there, and someone I'm definitely definitely going to go AG. watch some more tape on. Yeah, we might have to get your boy Riley on here to tell us why we shouldn't be taking Akeem Butler. Up. I believe he has him as his wide receiver ten. I think he's a pretty big Jeez. hater. Yeah, wide receiver. That's 10. a master hater. <laughs> A by master hater. <laughs> all, right. all right, really got somewhere yeah. there. <laughs> Jay Wayne, who you got it too? I mean, I'll go, I'll go Butler at two. Okay, yeah, I, I think I'm I'm with you. I could take him at one. I think he's maybe a little safer, but with the whole value thing with DK Metcalf, I I, I feel pretty equally as safe. I guess I don't know. I, I I agree. He did a lot. He did a lot more in in the one year he got. The bulk of the the produ- the targets, and I mean, he definitely has almost as high of a ceiling. I mean, he's got a pretty high ceiling, and he's got, a, I think, a decent floor. And I'm willing to overlook the uh, breakout age, and I, I I'll go Butler at two. Yeah, well, I'm more I'll, excited about him than <coughs> I am Harry. I think. So I, I think have to I think Harry there's a lot. At, I'm, I'm, there's a lot to be said for Harry being, I think, pretty pretty safe and pretty bulletproof. Um, so it's kind of hard for me not to take him right here, but I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna agree with you with your kind of one pick on Metcalf, and I'll 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 take the big cut right here Put and, and take two. a little bit more risk with some insulated with some insulated value moving forward on maybe Metcalf holding some decent value of of what could be and a couple of big plays. Yeah, holding some it's value. Not gonna take much longer. I think Harry's just a, a really safe, so I'll put Harry at three. Out of these guys, um, I think he's really safe, but it's not—it's not as fun. Uh, but like you know, depending on how you want to play it, I could easily—you could easily have him at one if you really don't want to take a big swing and a miss. I think uh, I think Harry is is a is a fine pick. I don't think there's really too much of a wrong answer here. Right. I mean, half it's all, the, pre- it's all half preference, the, right? And half of these guys are going to miss anyway, and it's well, really going to. It's going to. They're de- not all going to be first round picks, right? right. And it's going to depend on landing spots, and you know who the hell knows, right? In it two could weeks, be, could be. Th- I mean, we could have this conversation again in 
five years and see who was right. Yeah, right. And, and and the best wide receiver could be none. Could be neither of these guys. Right. It could be AJ Brown. Could be yeah. Paris Campbell. Could no, be could be Andy Debo, Isabella. Could I don't be know. Isabella could be Greg Dortch. Right. Yeah. You know who and the hell knows. For the record, like Casey and I haven't done research on AJ Brown yet. He'll be coming up maybe next week. Yeah. Um, these so are the I only three receivers that I've looked at. Right. I feel it's, it's been weird. Like I, it's it's kind of sucks. Like. Some of these camera angles, like, show me the replay. Right. Please another, show me the replay. A part that we probably should have talked about earlier with these receivers here is that it it, it it really is hard to watch receiver tape unless you can get the all 22. And, like, I all, would pay some serious cash if right. someone gave me some college all 22. Right. They're not even giving it to Matt Harmon anymore. So, like, I just, I don't understand. Like, a lot of these guys who are, I'm very appreciative of all these guys who are making the cut ups, but, like, only a handful of the guys will, like, after these guys are making the catch, there's a f- replay of almost every almost catch. every time. Unless the offense is going so fast, they right. can't show you the replay. Caddy the Lama balls. does the best job, in my opinion, of always. After somebody makes a catch, you can almost always count on a replay coming with his stuff. Right. Um, and that's when you get to really. And that's see. when you can see what actually happened. The breakdown of the feet, how he how he ran his route. If you wipe something off, if you know all those kind of things, and sometimes you can see it on the regular play, but it's like. You're slowing it down and you're frame by frame in it, trying to see what the hell went on, and then you're halfway out of the picture on most. You're of not it, a so. deluded Yinzer fan. I, I mean, I'm fine with him. I, I like, I like, like I said, I'm, I'm it, down. It's, it's sad we've watched so many of these guys and we know who the guys are doing these cut ups that I know who their YouTube names right. are. Right. And and I'm got to subscribe. Like I said, I'm very thankful, and everybody who watches them should hit the subscribe button and thumbs up. And I believe Caddy has a Patreon as he well. He does, on there too. and you should support it. Yeah. I think you can give him a buck. And yeah, and be good keep with doing it. what you're doing, so, buddy. Appreciate it. We really appreciate all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so who's who's your number two? Do we we didn't get you in he, there? He, right? he said I, Butler. I went, I went Butler. So I went Butler. So to recap, oh, but I thought he, I thought, but you could throw AJ Brown in there if you want. Yeah. I so I would have I would have Brown over. So you've you out I would of us, have, you've done Brown. I've so. done Brown. I would have Brown over Butler for the same reasons I had Harry because and still I, behind Harry though. So. Yes, because I believe Harry has a little higher ceiling than Brown does. Okay. All right. So you got Harry one, Brown two, Butler three, Butler Metcalf three, four. Metcalf four. And Jay Wayne. I'm going Metcalf, Butler, Harry. And I'm going Butler, Metcalf, Harry for, to, to wrap up uh, today's today's little show and discussion. And I, I don't think I really answered if I was on the clock at 1-1. One, one. <coughs> right. What are you, you, you going to do there? This is very tough because I almost never take receivers, especially this high. You like, put Butler there. I usually go. Well, I don't know. I usually want to be the one one. You take Metcalf. I, it's hard not to take. <laughs> right? Met, it's really hard not to take Metcalf right there. He's not my wide receiver one, but I got to take him at one one. I know. Like, but man, I believe in David Montgomery. I really do, and that's ridiculous to take him at one one. It really is. Yeah, because you don't have to. I right. mean, yeah, but, I would but say if you don't but, have another first round pick, you do have to. But for me, like, you know? I, I want him. And if it falls in a terrible spot, then maybe this changes. But I mean, for me, I've watched the guy for a while and I've just I've seen a lot of tape and I know a lot of people are saying Josh Jacobs is the guy and whatever. I've I'll you miss a decent amount of time. This isn't a class where I feel super great about it. Like last year, I had my definitive four or five guys and I'm trading back and doing this or that. This year, it's whatever, and if, if I if I couldn't make a move and couldn't do anything else, it would really be hard for me not to take Akeem Butler, but I, I'm always a running back guy because they just, like I said, we've talked about it a million times, the receivers typically take a little while to pan out, and if, the, if a running back hits, they're like carry-on. Geis is still a third, fourth-round startup right. pick. Carry on didn't a, even do that much. Carry on's a second round, round pick. pick. Chubb's a second round pick. Sony Michelle, yep. third or fourth round pick. And he got hurt before the season even started and was hurt halfway through the season. Like the running back value goes up so high. If, if Montgomery goes somewhere and does something like DJ Moore is like a fringe fourth round pick sometimes. And like, I don't even really love taking him there. Somebody else Can't usually takes him. And that Can't was the best it. player in there. Like Kirk slides down. Ridley slides down. Uh, all the receivers from that, you know, so and Mike Williams still only a fifth round. Corey Davis is still up there. He was one four yep. in the actual NFL draft. One five. One five. And so, I mean, yeah, but look at look at John Ross. I mean, I mean, it's just <laughs> well, depends. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's but, shown absolutely nothing. Right. So sure. But I'm just giving you an example. No, of I, guy get you, I got you. I got you. So that's kind of like I, I really like Montgomery. And if I really couldn't get out of it, like 
like and I'm obviously landing spot every, like I that's my guy and I kind of want him. Yeah, so. I, I think I think if you're in a MFL draft this year, I think your eight hour clock's gonna be used up a lot from guys trying to trade back. Guys trying to trade back or guys trying to get out of the 2019 first I'll, or the 2020 first. I'll take my 2019 first, pair it with a guy on my team who's pretty good and probably try to move it for a pretty good, solid veteran already if, if that's the case. Yeah, but, I, yeah I, I would totally do that too. I mean, I have a team where... I inherited an orphan team in, in this league, and I like I still have I, I dropped three guys on my team, and I still have Eddie Lacy on my team. <laughs> like this guy was doing nothing, and I'm not even paying for the league because that's how bad this team is. But like, I have the 103 in this draft, and if I'm gonna do whatever I can to try and move back and gain more capital or yeah. just trade into 2020, because I this just the team is just not it's just nowhere. And near like competing. I don't I don't like in. Previous drafts, I would have needed a, a little bit more to move back. I don't need a ton to move back in in this draft because I feel like I'm I'm pretty like I just I just need to gain a little bit by move. Like right. I'm not going to kill you to move back in this draft and, right. and try to nickel and dime you. I just want to move back and and gain a little bit of something I, I to think move back I, a pick or three. I think if I have, and then like, I'm okay with taking whomever is left. I think if I have a top four pick, I probably will take a swing at one of these top four guys, but. After that, I'm top four guys being who? Like the you. two running backs and the two wide receivers. The, the, the two Mon- receivers Montgomery being and Jacobs and, and Metcalf and Butler. I think you gotta know your league. You gotta know your league mates in this. It, well, I know yeah. the with running this, backs with this go draft with this draft specifically. I mean, because if you have a if you're in a league and you can trade back to the one oh five, one oh six and still get your one oh one and you know yeah. you can do that, then by all means yeah. do that. Agreed. Because Agreed. this because of this draft class is just so there's it's it's there's just so many thoughts on the draft class that I mean you can trade back there's, in these situations. There is no definitive real player. Maybe like I feel like Metcalf is kind of the most definitive player. I think Harry were. is still the one one in terms of DLF ADP for rookies. Yeah, I, I I think he is. He definitely is on their uh, website. April ADP is recently out. Yeah. All right. All right, well, I don't know what we accomplished here in two weeks when the con- when the NFL draft happens. Probably this will all, all be jumbled up, but put those profiles down for your pleasure. Appreciate you joining us, Matt. Always good to have uh, another opinion in here. Our first and only ever guest, second time in. We'll, we'll be having you around, I think, quite a bit here. for. A sh- Hit him up on Twitters, at Fat Mormon. Hit us up at the FF Dynasty, at IMC Myers, at J Wayne's World. Big Co's not with us tonight, at Dynasty Big Co. You can find him. Appreciate you joining us, everyone. Letting us list, letting us creep into your ears on your drive or your boring day at work or wherever you're listening to us at. We really appreciate the time you took to, to do that. And uh, if you're looking for some extra content, head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. There's a link on our homepage of the website, the FF Dynasty.com. A lot of things going on there you can find all of our content if you're looking to do some research on these rookies we've talked about you can find their player page and find out all the things that's what i'm using now i built these rookies these wide receivers and i'm using that i'm using the website to do my research because i can look at game logs and i can uh, there's links to all the youtube Mm -hmm. videos the cut-ups and there's highlights and there's the combine metrics and then uh once we've talked about the guy you'll see that pop up on that page as well patreon an extra episode every week t-shirt after six months access to the community page answering a ton of questions the comfiest t-shirt i've, I've of any of any podcast uh, that i've that i've won so <laughs> i can i can endorse yeah like that i like that well let's end on that good note thanks for joining us everyone till next time you've been listening to the ff dynasties married to the game